What's going on YouTube? Welcome to episode 126 of the USS Enterprise D tutorial. I'm Zero Elite and I just want to thank you very much for tuning in today's episode. If you haven't, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and help me in supporting the channel. I can't thank you enough for that. And uh, of course, uh, be sure to join the Discord channel. I'll have a link in the description below. Right now I'm doing a poll on my next ship build, uh, so definitely be sure to check that out. Um, I've accumulated a list based off of my top requests on Minecraft, and you can uh, vote in that right now. Once you join the Discord, click on Next Build Poll. Uh, if there's anything that you don't see, if you don't see anything on that poll that you want to see me build, you can always also drop a suggestion under Build Suggestions. But we're going to kind of hop right into today's episode. We've got somewhat of a longer episode today. Um, just about 29 minutes we're picking up right where we left off from yesterday's episode so you can see i've already added in my walls i've completed this process on all four corners of my mall uh, so all i've done is i've gone over the lip that we added on that gray lip and i've gone three high on top of that i've done that for both decks on all four sides so now what we're going to do is we're going to start to blend this in to where it's seamless to where you can't tell that there is a mall or not a mall that you can't tell that the corridors um, are intersecting with our mall so what we're going to do now is everywhere that we've added in our additional walling here before we actually hit our corridor wall we're going to do a row of the gray concrete on the top row and then we're going to go down one in that's actually within the row that we had added in the previous episode and we're going to do another row of that gray this way it matches up perfectly with that corridor and you won't be able to tell that we did this um, kind of on accident because we just ran out of room so this way hopefully when we're done you won't be able to tell where um, the corridor ends and our wall begins unless you come above it now it doesn't really matter which order you do this in but we want to make sure we add this stripe on the second row and then on the third row not deleting that white row going in one and adding a layer of that gray but only up until we hit our corridor because once you get to the corridor that's the work's already been done Just like that. And we're going to do this for all four sides on both decks of the mall. Now this is going to get just a little bit dark. I'm sorry about that. I'm probably going to end up fast forwarding through some of today's episode because I'm not going to be showing all four corners of this live. And I don't remember if I have done all of this live or not. If I did, then we're just going to fast forward through it. If not, then we're just going to skip to the next part of today's episode. Okay, cool. So I only showed that one section, which is great. Um, so right now we're on the very bottom deck. I've talked about adding this in. This is our entertainment deck. What we're basically doing is we're connecting our straightaway corridors with that outer ring or excuse me, that inner ring. And this is the only deck that's missing it. Um, I'm not going to lie. I don't know why it didn't occur to me to add this sooner. Um, I'm frankly lucky that I didn't have any issues with building out some of the interior. But this is, again, why it's kind of important to wait um, to add in your interiors. Just in case you want to add in something like this at one point, you have the room to do it and it's not overlapping with another idea 
but even though uh, it's going literally going up to the wall of the aquarium, this will continue through the aquarium. We'll have to put walls on each side and it'll go straight to the middle. And you're gonna do that on all four sides. Bring it right up to that uh, aquarium wall and then we'll worry about uh, clearing out the area in the aquarium where the deck uh, actually comes into. And see, I was talking about this in one of my uh, last episode that I really need to establish what color I want my ceiling to be um, on my turbo lifts because that's a problem I've noticed that some of the turbo lifts, they're blue, some of them are gray, some of them are cyan, and I really need to just make a decision on that. Um, I, I mean, I guess it's not really that big of a big deal in what I could do if I really wanted to is have them categorized by class and deck, making them different colors, just as one way to determine where you're at. Um, but I think that would kind of be overkill a little bit. Um, I think at this point, I just kind of want to make them the same color and the ceiling anyway. And we're just cleaning up our exit point to come on to the uh, the main shuttle uh, shuttle bay here that needed to be slightly adjusted. I actually need to move the turbo lift shaft itself. I need to move it to the back wall here, and right now it's going to the left, but it needs to be on that back wall because, again, being consistent with our other turbo lifts. That's how they are. So we want to make sure that we do that on this one as well. And then also building out our entryway point. And I even need to move that down by one because um, the entryway point to come into the turbo lift is only too high. It's not three. So that's how it is on the Serratos. I have it three high, but I looked, ended up just being too big. So I, that's why I ended up adjusting it back to two because that's how I had it on my other uh, builds for my Starship um, um, turbo lifts or just doorways in general. I'd have them too high. Three is just too many. See, that's what we're missing now, that orange concrete to simulate the doorways. That's important. I want to make sure that we have that on every deck. You can see here on this area, it's even the ceiling is white concrete. That's probably something I'm not going to include in the tutorial series. I'm probably just going to decide on a color and tell you what tell you guys what color I made it, just so you can replicate that if you want to. But um, this just goes to show even somebody like me can easily, easily make a mistake on Minecraft, even when you think that you're paying attention. This is why it's always a good idea to go back and do like a brief uh, refresher um, if you're rebuilding something that you've done in other uh, areas of the ship, just for uh, consistency reasons. Yeah, and that's just too big having that be three high. That that needs to be brought down to two. As you can see, that deck is two, and then this is three.
Stuff like that drives me nuts. And I probably just caught it, and then I'm going to fix it. And our very bottom of our saucer, that's going to be reserved for the um, captain's yacht. That'll be cool. Um, I don't have a captain's yacht in any other area or any other ship that I've done in the past. This will be the first one that I've done. Uh, so that'll be kind of a cool build to do so you guys can see what I did um, for it. Um, but that was kind of like a thing that I actually just kind of winged it a little bit because there really weren't any interior shots of the captain's yacht. I found one screenshot of how it kind of looked like on the outside, but unfortunately I really wasn't able to include it into the build itself because there was almost like this observation area, um, directly above the captain's yacht. So like you can watch, watch it being detached from the ship. And I just, I didn't have the room to add that. Um, underneath the aquarium. It was just pretty much I had just enough room to build out the captain's yacht and just call it a day. But I really wanted to include it because that's something the Enterprise D had. Now this is a turbo lift here. More than likely, I'll have a turbo lift on the exact opposite side. So this way, instead of one, there's two. And like I said in the previous episodes, just to have everything match up a little bit. So again, this is a big ship. And technically, on the Enterprise D, there's a thousand families living on board. So it makes sense to have this many turbo lifts. That's why we're adding in all these extra corridors and everything to kind of cut down or at least have the appearance that we're cutting down the flow of traffic in certain areas of the ship you know or at least that's the idea behind it We're going to be getting just a little bit of work done on the outside of the ship. I don't know if anybody's w been watching uh, Star Trek Picard Season 2. Um, I won't give away spoilers on the channel. Um, but I'm not going to lie. Like, the first two episodes I thought were fantastic. But um, my fears of what they were going to do uh, this season kind of came true. And I was hoping that the entire season wouldn't take place in the past. That seems like that's how it's going to be and then i think it was episode four they had some really bad continuity uh, issues and that w maybe wouldn't bother uh, a regular person but for somebody like me that grew up watching star trek little things like that bug me because it comes off like the writers just didn't do their homework you know um but i mean i don't know i really want to like star trek picard uh because i love tng i watched it growing up but i just I don't know, like, uh, the vibe I've been getting from Picard is uh, Season 2, and it's been crazy because they have never mentioned Kirk so much in their other shows, unless it was one that he was in, other than Star Trek Picard Season 2. It's almost like they want to remind people of Star Trek The Voyage Home, so much so to make them forget about what they're watching this season. Um I don't know, like, th this is one of the reasons why I say that Star Trek is at its best when it's at, when it's uh, serialized, where every episode has a new story. Um, that's a good thing, because it gives you the opportunity to try out a lot of different things, and the great episodes, guess what, you can do sequels to those. Because TNG did have sequel episodes, they'd be two-parters, or they'd revisit it another se uh, season later. And I think that's my biggest gripe that I have right now with both... Star Trek Discovery and Picard is that they pick one storyline that's maybe good for an episode, but not a season. Um, and it's actually kind of crazy because I feel like I can talk about it at this point. Um, uh, the last season of Discovery. And we're going to talk about that, but I do want to mention right where I'm at right now. So we're actually in the very center of the ship and we're working on that turbo lift. We're moving the... Uh, the shaft to the backbone, like I said that we were going to. But let's talk about Star Trek Discovery. So, um, Star Trek Discovery Season 4 actually did something that I've been wanting them to do in Star Trek 
with the movies now for like the past five movies. I wanted them to go back instead of the next Star Trek just being about the next villain having a problem to solve. And um, the the DME or the DMA, I, I forget the um, what the damn thing's called, but that uh, that was actually perfect because it it gave them it gave the crew an issue to solve without necessarily making it about the next villain. And um, I won't spoil it for those of you that haven't finished uh, Discovery Season 4, but it was actually pretty decent. I won't say great, but I'll say decent. I think that's a good way to describe it. But even that, like, I felt like um, they really, they, they, they took an idea that was really a one-episode shot, and they stretched it out through a whole season. And uh, that this is one of the reasons why I'm actually really looking forward to Star Trek Strange New Worlds because supposedly they're going back to the serialized way of storytelling how Star Trek was structured to be to begin with. Um, I know that we've also got Star Trek Four that's getting ready to come out. Um, I'm actually pretty excited about that because the Kelvin timeline has grown on me quite a bit. I think those movies are pretty good. But they've got their own problems as is. But Chris Pine, I was reading an interview with him the other day, and his comments were promising because he basically said that uh, Paramount needs to stop chasing after that Marvel money um, and the Marvel fans and just focus on making a great Star Trek for people that enjoy the Kelvin timeline, enjoy those characters, and above all, love Star Trek. And I, I honestly, I couldn't agree more. Like, that's been, I think, the number one problem with the movies and then also the shows is that they're trying to, they're trying way too hard to cater to another audience. Um, I, I see this, like, outside of Star Trek too, with, like, other movie franchises, like Terminator. Um, not the uh, brand new Ghostbusters, but the remake. They... They'll basically remake the movie for a completely different demographic, but then they get upset when not only that new demographic didn't show up to support it, and they pissed off the fans because they didn't make a movie that they wanted to see. Um, and I feel like, you know, it's at this point, like Star Trek's been around for 60, 60 something years, if not more, give or take. My math's probably going to be wrong on that a little bit. Um, but Star Trek's been around for a while, and, like, the fans basically have kept that thing going. Like, they kind of owe it to the fans just to give the fans what they want. And that Star Trek has always kind of been, like, a niche show. Not Either you like Star Trek or you don't. There, there's no in-between. Like, I've never met anybody that, like, oh, yeah, Star Trek's okay. You know, like, I'll watch it if it's on TV. Like, it's always been the one or the other, that either you like you like it or you don't. Either you get it or you don't. It's always one or the other. It's not everybody's cup of tea. And I feel like they should just... It's there's an opportunity there with the new Star Trek movie. Deliver a great movie for the fans that love Star Trek, and you might end up getting some new fans out of that because maybe you know there's really with this new generation, nobody from this new generation has been exposed to that real uh, to that form of storytelling, where you have really a truly great story that's full of heart within an optimistic future that like we need that stuff right now more than ever. Um, this is one of the reasons why I say Star Trek for the voyage home is my favorite Star Trek, even though it's got the most ridiculous plot out of all the Star Trek movies that to go back in time and save whales, but it's got the best acting. It's got the most heart and it's an interesting story. And you can take a silly idea and make it interesting, but you know, there's, I think there would also be a difference. Like if they did Star Trek Four as a series, I think people wouldn't have liked it because they would have overstayed their welcome. Um, and I, I think that's a lot of the problem that the new Star Trek has. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they'll fix it. Hopefully, Strange New Worlds will do really, really well. Um, hopefully, they'll get their act together with the new movie that's coming out and actually make something for the fans. Maybe they'll make them realize, hey, you know, uh, these people have kept Star Trek in business for a long time. Maybe we should just make movies for them. It, that sounds like a crazy idea, but believe it or not, this is how movies used to be made. It, like, and I don't understand why it's so hard to understand with these producers nowadays because they're so jaded by 
these Marvel movies that are out right now. Like every studio is. It destroyed the DC universe because they had to have something exactly like the Marvel universe. And it's like, that's great, but like that's working for them. Like that's not going to work for DC. That's not going to work for Star Trek because they've already, they've got their niche there. And they've got their fans. They need to just continue making movies that focuses on that core fan base that loves it because it'll expose, it'll, for one, they'll, the fans will go back and see the movie. They'll take their kids and they'll make new fans out of it. Um, so, I mean, that's just kind of my opinion on it. But I, I still think that now is a great time to be a Star Trek fan. We still have a, a ton of variety. Um, I don't necessarily want to see all Star Trek be the same. I'm just basically saying that there's a lot more opportunity for uh, it to be a lot better than it currently is. I still think that the best era in Star Trek was in the 90s because we had uh, the Shatner movies that were going, and then you had TNG, and then once the Shatner movies ended, then you had Deep Space Nine, and then eventually Voyager, um, and then Enterprise. Uh, there was... There was, there was some Star Trek for everybody. And they have that uh, outline there on uh, Paramount Plus where they could do the same thing. Like, you can still have, you know, your version of Star Trek for Discovery, but don't make Picard the same way because you're just, you're, you've already got that show basically with Discovery. That's why I challenge them, like, just for the heck of it, make a classic Star Trek show. And see if people will like it. And it looks like they've accepted that challenge with Strange New Worlds. We'll see. Um, I know that I still have one thing I'm kind of... Cons well, two things I'm kind of concerned with. One, that they're bringing uh, Captain Kirk into the show way too soon. Um, I was actually looking forward to having a show that just focused on Pike. And then I also heard some things, that, uh, some changes that they're going to be making to Kirk's character that's completely outside of canon. Um... I read somewhere online. Um, it was one of the movie outlets. It was a couple of months. It was a. Uh, it was like a year ago, like when they greenlit the show that they were. Uh, I was reading that they were going to make uh, Captain Kirk. Um, they were going to change his sexuality. And don't get me wrong, I'm all for inclusion and everything, but like, that's not what the original series was. And if that's what you want to do. I don't see the problem with it, but make it in an alternate universe. That's why I think a lot of the people were accepting of the Kelvin timeline is because they said, okay, we want to work with the original crew. Or we want to do stories based off them, but we want to do our own thing. Well, how do we get around this? Let's make it an alternate timeline. If they would have done that with Discovery on season one, I think people would have been pretty much fine with all the changes that they made to the Klingons and having all these uh, uh, holograms and all these upgrades uh, to the ships that you ne just never saw on the original series. Um, and again, I just, I think that this goes to doing your homework and thinking about um, making just some wise decisions with the property before you leap. Um, and I think that's honestly maybe why the Marvel Universe is so much more successful than Star Trek is presently or the DC Universe and a lot of other ones is because everything is planned out strategically. I have my own opinion of the Marvel movies, which I won't get into, um, but I will say that I was probably one of the few people that was disappointed and sad when Fox got bought out by Marvel because I thought I, I was one of the few people I was thinking like, you know, this, that's, that was a lot of our variety. And I think that's one of the things that we're missing right now is because we're really only getting uh, superhero movies from two different sources before we were at least getting it from three. And every once in a while you had an independent, um, so yeah, that's just kind of my opinion on it. I've kind of rambled on about a whole bunch of different topics today, but as we there really hasn't been too many things I've had to point out in today's episode. Really just trying to get through these episodes as fast as I can uh, and still showing you guys all the, the steps that I've taken. But this is, again, something that I've been thinking about uh, after doing the Enterprise D, if I ever do a ship this large again, and just how I do my tutorials in general. Um, I might make them a little bit more streamlined with the stuff that I show, and I might try to just push my way through um, doing sections at a time. This way I don't have to backtrack as much, you know what I mean? Because um, I've only been doing this for like two years at this point, so I mean, it's going to be a learning process. But I do think my tutorials are getting better um, compared to the first couple of uh, 
the very first tutorial I ever did, which was the mock tutorial episode one and two. And then from there, I went in and I started doing the uh, Disquare Enterprise, and I felt like I learned a tremendous amount of uh, things, what to do and what not to do on that tutorial. I tried to apply that to Enterprise D and the Cerritos, um, but the Enterprise D, this thing is just... I, at times, I'm not going to lie, I feel like I'm never going to finish this ship, even though like I really am on the tail end of it. Um, there's just so much, there's so much to do. And the crazy part about it is we're not even going to be filling in all of it. And like, at this point, like I'm, I'm content with that. At one point when I was building the ship, I was really like teetering on, well, you know, I want to have this ship hundred percent completed. And I just got to thinking about, I'm like, you know, it's taken me this amount of time to get this far. How long is it realistically going to take me to build in, to fill in the whole ship? And not only that. I'm not going to be able to find reference material for all that stuff because there's a full version of the Enterprise D that just doesn't exist uh, unless it's just re uh, the same rooms repeated over and over again in huge sections of the ship. So, I mean, that's something that's definitely going to be a factor in this. And I think I talked about in the last episode, a good thing about that, though, is that I think that there's going to be rooms in, on my ship that maybe some people decide that they want to do something differently. Uh, to each his own. Everybody's going to have their own way of doing things. Um, they might want to do different things. I might have people that want to do exactly what I have, but I think the great thing about having some of this extra space left over is that there will be room to expand upon it. So maybe there's some things that I added in that you really liked what I have, but you wanted to expand upon that. You'll be able to do that with this build. That's not necessarily something that we've been able to do with the builds in the past. I think with the exception of the Cerritos, but the Cerritos wasn't really my fault because I was actually fully intending to do another season of the Cerritos, but uh, uh, Lower Decks has been killing me because they haven't been showing new rooms of the ship like I was hoping that they were going to as the seasons progressed. Um, I'm almost kind of like at the point where it's like I don't foresee me coming back to that ship unless they just you know decide to one of these seasons to really flesh out the interior but i don't know we'll see what happens with it like i said right now the only ship i'm really planning on doing a revisit is um the enterprise a from star trek beyond the 1.1 build um which won't necessarily be a revisit because we'll be rebuilding it um and uh, at some point after either season one or season two of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, I'll be doing probably like an eight episode uh, season two to that to update the corridors and some of the rooms on the interior to match how it looks on the new show. Because that'll be pretty cool. I've never done anything like that before, so I'm looking forward to it. So you can see we're looking pretty good here. We're adding in our bracket, our corridor brackets on their entryway points into our center of our um, mall slash aquarium. And now we're filling in the roofs. And what's crazy about this, we're actually going to be coming back in and redoing the roof. Um, this was something that I actually decided on um, pretty late in the build. I just actually one day... I, I got a killer idea for to change something in the roof because I was trying to think of a way that I can make my corridors on the Enterprise D look a little bit better. Um, and I came up with a great idea. I ended up changing out the entire roof system on my ship. Um, but that's not something that you're going to see me doing in every episode. I think there's like one or two episodes where I show it, like the process, but I don't spend a significant amount of time in the tutorial series on it because... Once you learn the pattern, um, it's pretty easy to replicate it. And it's crazy. This area, the center of the ship, is kind of what made me think about it. And it was using these stairs. And I was trying to think of a way to cover up the next deck directly above me. And the stairs kind of led me on that path um, to redoing the roof. Because, you know, like I try to, you know... I try to make each of these ships unique, you know, I try to make them have their own identity and I really try to take into consideration how they looked on the shows. So this way when we're going build to build, we're just not basically um, using a cookie cutter for our corridors and different rooms on the ship. I, I try my best to, 
to bring out all the details that I possibly can. Now our outer wall, or outer, the ceiling for our mall here in the very center of the hub here, um, all of this we can fill in with the half slabs. Um, which I think I do that, I'm not sure if I add another row, or if I just stay at this one and I just try to blend it in based off that. But I'm pretty sure that's what I do for that whole ceiling. I just go off of the next build uh, line that I can, and I just uh, fill all that in, I do that for both decks. But I think that's going to wrap us up today. We shot through 29 minutes like it was nothing. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to wrap us up. I just want to thank everybody again for tuning in today's episode. If you haven't, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button helping me in supporting the channel. I can't thank you enough for that. And new subscribers, don't forget to hit notifications on so you get notified when those new videos drop. And speaking of new videos, you can always catch my new Minecraft episodes dropping Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. If you have any questions regarding today's episode or just dropping by to say, hey, be sure to drop a comment below or in the Discord. Definitely love hearing from everybody. Um, yeah. But I just want to thank everybody again for tuning in today's episode. I hope everyone has a happy and safe week. And I'll catch you in the next episode. And of course, what did you make in Minecraft today? Let me know in the comments section.